What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Subido Show with myself, Watsy. I'm a good friend there, Martin Oog Bradley. How are you, Martin Oog? I'm good? all right. I'm all right. Are you the Subido Show? There are no more. Is that? I don't know. Subido Show? Think. There was another something else was called the Subido Show. That, Netflix was the Subido Show. Sorry, Watsy Subido Show. I don't like calling it Watsy. It should be Watsy and Martin's Subido nah. Show. No, no, no. Don't do it with me. Here. I have a theory. theory. I have a theory. About the thumbs. About, you got a bit closer. About the thumb, the thumbs downs. Well, funny you mentioned the, the thumbs down. Go ahead. Go on. My theory is there's always three yes. thumbs downs. Yep. And you used to be on a show <laughs> called... <laughs> I can't remember what you called it. Shade Shade Flex or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, and you abandoned it. You abandoned it. And I think that the Three Musketeers has booted <laughs> you, oh, D'Artagnan, out well, every weekend. They're getting together and they're thumbs down on it. I don't in the that. hope that you'll get disheartened and our <laughs> people will think... This cunt deserves a, a, a thumbs down and there'll be more thumbs down and you'll think, oh no, no, my star is fading. I need to get back in with the fucking superstar crowd. So. You know that's it? you know what this is? Yeah. This is a ladder. A ladder? A ladder. It came mm-hmm. to me. It came to me from one of our viewers. It says, Dear Martin and Lawrence. It's a two-pager, by the way. The fucking name of me for it. <laughs> Hold on. Dear Martin and Lawrence, I watch your show every week and feel I need to make a complaint. Oh. My issue is not with Martin, Og, full name. So, to you, so you, to you, kind sir, I tip my hat and wish you a good day. Two thumbs up. <laughs> my issue is with yourself, Lawrence. I feel you use your position of power to make fun at my beloved Glasgow Rangers. It's fucking right. Con- You're fucking right. Here I, we are. I, I continue. Most recently, you made fun of Stephen Gerrard. First name terms, of course. Leaving the club, Stephen. Yes. Who an... You're, not making no, you're, you're not making no sound there. 55 league titles. I think there's a wee correction there. one league title. Uh, I do wish you would leave Stephen and Rangers alone. If you did, you would stop getting thumbs down. Uh, or one of them. With both our sides playing in the semi-finals this weekend, hopefully we meet in the final. Yours sincerely, Teddy Burr. Well, Teddy Burr. Both our teams did play this weekend. And your team didn't go through. So see you later. Jesus. Check it up your jumper. <laughs> <laughs> but what? What's the chances? What's the chances? Ladders coming to my door. How did they get your address? That's right. I think it's somebody I know. Don't know who. Oh, can't, can't get one of them fucking Netflix boys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's somebody which, I've ordered stuff off previously. Which, <laughs> which of them Netflix boys owns a... Oh, I know who it is. Who? Tom Westwood. Oh, he he likes the there. Rangers. He likes the Rangers. Do you think so? I don't know. He likes the boy. It would actively not like Celtic because you like them. <laughs> Well, this is true. Uh, in the week that's in it, um, poor old Bertie Old, Celtic legend, died this week. So, oh, God rest. God rest. He was one of the Lisbon Lions, played for Celtic. Um, don't want to go on about stuff like that there. Right. What's crack? We'll go over and see what Fuck Barry has to week out. You're going to go on about things like that there? I don't want to go on about things like that. Probably because you're getting hit mail now. Active, real hit mail. You don't even get that in the BBC anymore. <laughs> People tweet it. Tweet it them. Uh, really, BBC? really upset somebody if you've got a paper letter. A paper letter? Who writes paper letters these days? Some fucking angry fella who's not happy with you. You couldn't maybe a woman? Could be a girl? Can't the say fella? 
I'll take that one on board. I mean, <laughs> I can say whatever I want. <laughs> <Not my show. laughs> right, let's go over to fantasy football. <laughs> Uh, real change at the top. Badly drawn. Well, we're it's because we're recording on a Sunday for reasons that are to suit our guest and us as well. We haven't been able to record Wednesdays or Thursdays. Uh, we're in the middle of a game week, and badly drawn Blues is still top of the table. Thomas Regan, um, Dynamo de Folk, John Henson is still in second, and uh. Uh, oh, well, we disappeared. Um, Brendan Ashley, we are Groots in third. Uh, Emma Aykroyd, the subs, is in fourth. And Barry Spence, top race C, is in fifth. Um, out of the club, 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 club. Martin Oak, you are in 27th. Sam Stewart, Sam and Stewart's in 30th. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in 32nd. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, I don't know where Craig Stewart is so long. I think he's way down the bottom somewhere. Sorry, Craig. Can't find you. Can't make you down. Craig Stewart. It's just above you in 26. Craig's second there to the club. Uh, David Farley is in 23rd. Des Clark is up in the 8th position. Um, obviously, poor Ollie got the boot. Oh, I know. Shade bag. Mind oh, you, they're fucking shade. Oh, he's not at the wheel. Where's that Keen, Keen boy, the Keen Hogan boy, the big man? What number is he? Big man. Big man's not impressed with you, mate. Keen I know the big man's not impressed with me. There's no fucking reason not to be impressed with me, Keen Hogan. He, uh, he, said he, accepted, anybody. he said he accepted your apology anyway. <laughs> I had to go on a 50 mile bike ride with you. My arse is sitting on a bicycle for 50 miles. Keen, Keen Hogan is. Uh, He's in 19th. Above you, anyway. That well above me. He's fit. He's young and fit. Young, fit, and healthy. Um, Cycling everywhere. We're always out, out of a job, so God knows who's going to get that job. Uh, seen him getting that. Seen him getting interviewed. Now you say that. Seen him getting interviewed on the TV there about an hour ago. No suit on him, just a jumper, and it it was like it was like fuck, thank, thank. Fuck, that's over. That's what he was like. He was like, thanks, <laughs> fuck. Do you know what I think? I'm thinking I had to throw on the towel on myself for this old studio fantasy football league. Struggling at it. Terrible. You yeah, are shy of fantasy football. But hey, maybe be, maybe you're all big talk at the beginning. Hey, you're all big talk at the beginning. <laughs> oh, it's not a risk. Oh, it's not a fucking sprint to Martha. Oh, I'm fucking class. I'll tell you everybody twice, who to pick. Twice recently in the studio real world, so maybe it's working out. You're shade of fantasy football. You're good at Sabudo. Maybe you're right. I think I'm right. I think you're right. Well, Brent nicely. Proving us all right. <laughs> Money joke on Brent. <laughs> not really. We'll get on to that. <laughs> right. Um, Did Brent and Ashley not play recently with London Road? Is it Wrexham, wasn't he? Or was he in London Road? I think that he played for London Road in that wobbly hobby league. We'll check, oh, sure. we'll check it out. We'll, we'll, get we'll, a, check it we'll get out. We'll get that in the results. Um, let's go and see what Oshin has to say this week. So here is who's hot and who's not. Sex bomb, sex bomb. Well, you're my sex bomb. You can give it to me when I need to come along. Well, a heart to the Jim Tasha of Oshin Moore and Shaw. I'll show you more Ray because Tain the shark, didn't you? Well, folks, how are you all? It's Oshin Moore here, and here's my who's hot and who's not for this week. Well, first of all, Poor old Ollie, he's no longer at the wheel, and I would say Watsy won't be long following him out the door. Bradley's right, that boy's buck useless at this game. So anyway, my who's hot for this week? Uh, I go for Watford's top scorer, Saar, who also bagged one against uh, Man United, uh, and he takes his team to Leicester this week. Uh, my who's not? I would go for Harry Maguire, but we already went for him a few weeks ago. So we're going to go for uh, England and United defender Aaron Juan Basaka. Uh, despite their victory against Villarreal, they should find Chelsea far too strong for them. So Shane, Harjus, Shane, Moray, I was taking a shot in you, Chief Mischief and Chatton Shahogging. So that's it for this week, folks. I'll see you all next week. Slan, August, Bonner. What are you laughing at? You can't do. <laughs>
That's who he's hiding, who he's not. That's not what I can call him. Poor old Harry Maguire. He's having a fucking rotten time. <laughs> Here, um, he's a crab at contact, Harry Maguire, anyway, isn't he? So he has big square head. Big square dome on him. Big poster. He's like a big refrigerator from about that pitch. Here, uh, he's probably a fucking poster from up in your bedroom wall. You're a Man United fanatic. And now you're, you you don't mention that anymore at all. I don't like to bring local clubs and it and stuff. And people people will be divided. Then they'll start hating me for being a United supporter as well. You know what I mean? It's bad enough. More. If you get more, you get more of them. <laughs> Liverpool ones to be. Here, come on, the two circus. Stop sucking on the hash pipe. The pipe. I do. La- ladies and gentlemen. Back to the states again. We're near two for two now with this tooth. American international, friend of Kenny Beggs, Sabudio superstar from uh, the Vikes Smoke, one and only, Mr. Zach Walker. Welcome, Zach. A wonderful crack, Zach, Zach Walker. Hey, boys, how you doing? All's good, Zach. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me on. We, we got the a, a day that we can all agree on. Yes. Yeah. Sorry for the misunderstanding during the week. No, not at all. I uh, I've got a rather busy schedule as well with uh, little ones. I know we all do with families and work. So I'm glad it worked out. Good, good, how's good. your uh, How's your Sunday afternoon going in Colorado? Uh, lovely. Can't complain. Um, the children are being entertained and. Uh, I, I grabbed a bevy for the for the conversation, so ready to crack this and talk some Sabudia. Is that a Carlsberg you have Yes sir, you too? What about the the eight course? What about um <laughs> well, I'm representing <laughs> represent today, don't worry. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm fresh out. Patrick's in, uh, I think he's in Germany right now, so he's not around to, to get me a, a fresh case. So. He's in Germany. He's in Germany. I mean, that guy is everywhere, right? He is. He fucking gets a vote, man, doesn't he? I don't, I don't, I don't think he's playing Sabudio while he's there, but he's having a good time with the misses, so. Oh, we could have we could have hooked them up with St. Paul or one of the clubs over there. Yeah, I th- I think they're visiting some some fr- friends or something. So I'm I'm not quite sure. <laughs> ah, well, lovely. Can't play lovely. Sabudio all the time. No, unfortunately not. Right. <laughs> Here, Zach, are you um are you a student of the great Paul Eyes? Are you did you come from that academy? Uh, I unfortunately did not. Um, I did, however live out in Washington, D.C. for five years and got to play and train with Paul Eyes um, quite a bit and got to help out with some of those um, some of those kids. So kids, they're grown men now and they're beating me. So, <laughs> so I, I've known Patrick and Daniel Cranston, a lot of those guys since they were wee little lads. So um, uh, I was not a student, but I, I sort of feel like a student, just a little, like a little part of us. old, but... <laughs> Yeah, it's great. It's great the connection that he has with everybody <laughs> over there. You know, everybody seems to know him. He's like, he's like Vincent Popinol over here. He's like the Saint Vincent. Yes, Paul is. is like a saint. Uh, we, we haven't quite coined Saint Paul, but I think we should do that. Um, <laughs> we just call him the Godfather, and honestly, he has uh, probably contributed to more ASA members, American Sabudo Association members than anyone in the history of our uh, great organization. So he's a godsend. He's wonderful. He's he's like a friend, an older brother, an uncle, a father figure. He's he's just a wonderful, wonderful man. And uh, I'm thankful to, 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 to have known him for a while. So. Very good. And Thank here, you. what, what um, how did you find the beauty of them when you started out? Yeah, so I grew up in uh, I grew up in you know more or less Siberia. I grew up in Minnesota, which I doubt you've heard of. Um, oh, Fargo. Uh, that's North Dakota. Fargo. It's right across the oh, border, so not far. Yes, sir. Um, 
So soccer, football wasn't quite big up there, but I grew up playing competitively my whole life. And um, like anyone, wanted anything and everything to do with soccer. So my mother, um, when I was 16, I believe, uh, found Sabudio in a catalog for an old um, retail store called Sears that was quite popular throughout the, the States and unfortunately is going under now. And I think okay. she one of the last two sets um, available in the States for the World Cup 94 edition. So I got that from Santa Claus, and it was the old lightweights um, that would weeble wobble, and I couldn't stand it. Um, and then when they came out with Hasbro Solids um, a couple years later, somehow I got a set of those, and I it clicked. This is how you play the game, and uh, the rest is history. So yeah, it was a like most people, it was a Christmas gift. Uh, amazing! It's class. It's class to see it over there. You know, saying over there, but you know. 1994, soccer went to America with the World Cup. It wasn't big, you know. You, you had all the players that had travelled over and played in America's Pele, George Best. It was getting big, you know. So for the Sabudio to be big over there is fantastic, isn't it? George yeah. Best was in play. George Best and Pele were playing football in 1994. No, that they, was the and they, they had started to go over. Take care. Okay. Football. Jackie's army. Yeah, my biggest regret was my, my, they came to Chicago and that was the closest city from Minneapolis where I grew up. So it was about a six hour drive and my parents got tickets. Um, and I think my father and my mother went to see Spain, Bolivia, I think. I think that was when Echeverria got the fastest red card in World Cup history. 30 seconds in, he got sent off. <laughs> and my mother is not even a big football fan. Um, and my father, you know, didn't grow up playing it and I was begging for them to take me and they didn't. Um, so, so I didn't get to go see a game, but obviously it's coming back here in a few years. So I will make sure to, to be getting my tickets and, and finally seeing a world cup match. So. And what you, you mustn't, you mustn't be that old. Are you? You're not, you're a lot younger than me and Martin, are you? Um, so I'm 38. So, um, I guess young for Subudio, you know, community standards, but <laughs> I've been playing this for 20 plus years continuously, so I feel I feel like I'm on the older side. But um, yeah. When, you, when got, did you come over here? When you were over here playing? Yeah, so I was fortunate enough to get to study abroad in London in 2004. Um, so yeah, it was brilliant. I did not appreciate it enough at the time. Uh, but I was able to connect, um, with Chris Thomas, who, I, you know, is a good friend of the show and, and a good friend yeah. of mine. And man, he just took me under his wing and took me all around the UK and Europe. I mean, he was living in Cardiff at the time. So he would drive into London, deal with the traffic, pick me up, take me to Belgium, to France. We went up to Wales. I mean, just, Welcome, Berlin. just Welcome, Berlin. Welcome, Berlin. He he will forever be one of my favorite people in this game. He uh, so yeah, I, I, you know, I joined their club with Casper and Chris Thomas oh. and Dan Shore and Shorab and Eric Verhagen and the Maltese guys and man, being a, a twenty-year-old from Minnesota, I was just in heaven. It was it was wonderful. So uh, really, they really had a lot of good times and played a lot of fun tournaments and just had a lot of All good right. memories. So. That's so interesting. Like, we didn't know stuff like that, you know, something new about it. just shows you how close the community is, you know. Yeah. Six degrees of separation to everybody in Subudio, isn't it? Yeah, that's, I think Pat said it on your last show. It's kind of like a small little fraternity, and it's wonderful. I've been fortunate enough to get to play, I think I counted in like eight or nine countries and 25 plus states. And, uh, you know, you can travel anywhere and reach out to someone and, get a game or go have a pint or, or a cup of coffee. It's it's just a wonderful community, so. Brilliant, man. Brilliant. Yeah. Tell us about uh, trains, planes, and automobiles a few weeks ago. You nearly uh, <laughs> the whole competition. Oh, that's yeah. right. That was, that, was, that was a bit – that was that was my fault. I, I, I cut it a little too close. Um, so there was a tournament in the Western States Open out in San Francisco, and I live in Denver, Colorado, which – you know, by car is, I don't know, 15, 20 hours. So by plane, it's th two and a half hours direct. 
I waited a little too late to book my ticket, so I had to buy a connecting flight um, through Burbank, which is where Hollywood is, or I think Hollywood or the Warner Brothers Studios, where all the big TV execs are. So um, Pat was going, but he was on a different flight. We didn't really coordinate, unfortunately. And uh, I got, um, I think Pat picked me up at the airport at about 3 a.m. Pacific time, because there was a time difference with, with how far we had to travel as well. And I didn't actually get there until um, 2.15, right before kickoff. And thankfully, the organizers uh, delayed it, so I had to buy the first couple rounds. But we had some some weather delays, and uh, I was I was worried I was going to travel all this way only to miss the tournament. And it's just um, part and parcel for, you know, trips and tournaments in the U.S. I think the tournament they're having out in Maryland, the, the Festive Satellite, the Holiday Silver that Paul Eyes is hosting, it's like a four-hour plane ride. So... You know, I, I miss the days of living in London where everything was, was close and <laughs> easy to get to, cheap to travel. Four hours. Four hours. You've been in fucking Egypt from London? Four hours. Yeah, I've never <laughs> played a tournament in Cairo. That sounds fun. So. <laughs> and here, we're, you, you won that holiday silver before, did you? Um, yeah, I, I have. I've been fortunate enough to win that tournament. So it's uh, it's other than the national championship. It's the most prestigious um, American tournament, and I think it's got 25 plus years of history. Um, it's always always held on the East Coast in the Washington, Baltimore region, um, but it's a wonderful tournament. So yeah, our match highlights this week's match highlights from the Holiday Silver 2018. You versus Daniel Cranston. Oh, I think he beat me in that one. That's not a good one. You, to that's not you beat him. Oh, okay. I don't know. Normally he beats me. He beat me in one hot, right. so I remember. So. He doesn't beat you in that one. Ah, all right. Good, good choice then. I like that one. <laughs> Cheers. Well, we're, dedic- we're dedicating the whole show to you because we have your match highlights with Dan coming up, and then we have a uh, video diary from you and Patrick being in San Fran. Um, it's about, I know you, you're very uh, passionate about the beginners competition, how well that, that went. Tell us oh. about it. That was awesome. So that's something new that uh, we got to give credit to the guys from California for doing. I think that was Verant Kerkarian's idea, and he did that at the Nationals in 2019. And, you know, we've got so many players. Um, well, not really. We don't have so many players. And it, the, the game has kind of shrunk, I feel like, and it seems to finally start to be growing again. And, you know, some of us have taken this game a bit too seriously, which, you know, right or wrong, it's it's fun to do. But it has turned some people off. And so I think we've had to kind of stop and think how can we do a better job of making the game a little easier and more fun, especially for new players. And and I think shows like this are a wonderful way of doing that. So kudos to you guys for doing that. Um, But Veronica came up with the idea to have just a competition for the new players so that the more experienced ones can kind of get out of the way and help ref or coach or teach and it's amazing how that's kind of galvanized the community. So we did that at the Nationals here in Denver last summer. They did it at the Western States Open. And I think it's it's different than like the plate or the Mary Jane, as we call it, the consolation, because, you know, you're in the tournament, but you get knocked out. And so then you're kind of playing for, for a trophy, but it doesn't quite feel the same. And um, it's just such a I, – I know it's the kind of the idea that Fist have had, I think, with the satellites – competition so you're not you know the highest ranked players but even then there's some um, gamesmanship depending on if a top player <clears> hasn't, ranked, <throat> hasn't in a while so it's really just a way for organizers to kind of very clearly separate the, the new players from the experienced ones and that that watching that out in california was was awesome we had spectators those those the new players were getting into it and i think it really exposes them to what many of us like the more competitive side of the game, but in a, in a, in a more um, level footing, so to speak. So uh, their level, uh. I think it's going to be a, a, a regular fixture for all American tournaments moving forward. Um, Cause it's just, it's been wonderful. I think that's a brilliant idea because and you're, well, you're right. Would you say there with Saburio, it could be fucking anything, it could be table tennis or anything, but like Saburio is the community. And the game got that small where people thought, you've all these revival boys that thought us videos disappeared, but it never, ever disappeared. It was always going, but the people playing it, the, the volume of people got smaller. 
And as though as that volume gets smaller, the competition gets more fierce between them. So for anybody new to come in, they let like a stab established group, they're coming in to a high level where it's tense and it's it's very competitive. And like if you're going, you you played boys from Belgium or Italy, and you know you're back to get that boy because he got you the last time. And for new people to try and come in to the middle of that, you're right, off putting, off putting, man. But the, yeah. the, that idea you guys have that they, they should spread that all around Europe and I think they're doing that now in England. Alan Lee and that Wobbly Hobby crowd are doing that. The Gat League where they split it into two divisions, you know. Yeah. So you had that like the newer clubs were playing, newer clubs rather than, rather the than super me, clubs me coming and playing you. I could play somebody like Watson, you know, when we're on level. Yeah, I forget the name of the guy in the UK, but who's doing the pub league? And I know Bob Varney's doing that. Like that's just brilliant because there's so many yeah. dimensions and levels and to this game, and just taking it out to a pub and playing a drink in hand and having a game, I think is fantastic as well. Um, one of our club Getting members popular. built cup holders for our table, so you can have a beer sitting there, which I think is super <laughs> cool. So we just, you know, if there's a tent, and the, the more that we can bring into that tent, I think the better. So. Better for the game. Yeah, guys in, guys in Edinburgh. There's the boys in Edinburgh, the Monday night crowd in Edinburgh. Monday nights a video in Edinburgh. They play in a club. And it, it's no competition. It's just playing games. Yeah. Stuart, the thugs, a video collector, has has brass thing, has cash. That's the same thing around the pub and then Bob Barney as well. So there's at least I, three now in the UK. There's a club in Edinburgh. I went to Edinburgh, you know, 15 years ago. Or I would have loved to have played there. That's one of the cities I visited. I never got to play in, but... I didn't know there was a club there. That's fantastic. So. Well, they're only re relatively recent. They're only a couple of years going now, that Monday night club. Marco but you had Glasgow. Glasgow weren't far away. Dundee aren't that far away from Edinburgh. It's just there, there's never enough time or money to do all the travel. Uh, you know, one wants to do <laughs> game, unfortunately. So, but I'll, I'll be back over there eventually, especially now that Patrick's going over there. He's, he's making me quite envious. So. <laughs> you need to These get back, like, man. Uh, Trinity, um, yourself, Patrick, and Dan Cranston. Uh, uh, he's, he's a pretty close. Us? They're like pretty close in terms of uh, style and how you play and how you get on against each other. A close yeah. little group, the three. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's funny because you know I got a head start on those guys playing this game, and I remember when they were you know 13. But I think. Daniel made a national final in 2007 against me in St. Louis when he was 17. So, Bastard. you know, very early on they showed, they showed incredible promise. And as I always tell them, I mean, they could be if some of the best in the world, which they already are. It's, it's really up to them. So um, it's fun. They've pushed me to kind of stay involved in the game. And, uh, you know, I think, I think Dan especially has been really committed with how much European travel he's done. Um, so, every, you know, all three of us are kind of similar, but a little different and have our own unique styles, but it's, it's fun when we get together and, um, lo lo lots of good history and lots of good stories. Um, and, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll be together. I'm not going to make the holiday silver, unfortunately. I know Pat's going out, uh -huh. but hopefully Dan can come out, uh, next summer to Denver. We're Pat and I are trying to get Dan to move out here. We're trying to. Get everyone to move to Colorado and build the super. Everybody in there. Without us having to travel selfishly. So. <laughs> so not an awful lot of use in America, Zach. But the, the, the standard's very high. You know, relative, the standard's relatively quite high from all you American players. That's what I seem to have noticed. Oh, well, thank you. That's that's kind words. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think we've benefited from a couple things. We had... You know, quite a few Europeans that came over here in the late 90s and early 2000s. Chris Thomas, Phil Redmond from Liverpool, Vincent, um, Eric Verhagen, Joseph and Hansel from Malta, the Haas brothers from Austria. So we used to have a lot of Europeans traveling over here, which was helpful to, you know, they'd kick the, kick the snot out of us, but we'd learn a lot. I mean, Eric Verhagen, former world champion, he stayed with me. And I think we spent four hours in my in my garage just just training and talking about. I mean, he really kind of helped me improve a lot. Um, and then conversely, you know, we've 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 traveled quite a bit and had quite a few players go abroad. Um, Greg Deinhardt was one of the first. I think he played in the Fistif World Cup in Belgium in Namur back in 1998. Um, 
Eric Walton, Jim Taylor, myself, Paul Eyes. We've had a lot of players that have made the trip across the Atlantic. So, uh, and 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 honestly, you know, technology's kind of helped us being able to watch all the the games and kind of study that and learn. I was just watching some of the Facebook Live videos from the tournament in Rome going on today, and I, you know, yeah. I love watching that and and. Um, that that helps us. If if I were the Europeans, I wouldn't film those because we're picking up tips and tricks. But <laughs> <laughs> we so. He's, um, well, obviously you you know then the Rome World Cup is going to be in September seventeenth of September and eighteenth next year. So what way will your process be for picking a team and sending a team to the World Cup? Yeah, so we have um, a team captain, which is Christian Filippella, who I know you guys interviewed as well, yeah. and he was selected to be the team captain. And I believe the process now, I'm not as involved as I used to be in all of the happenings of the ASA, unfortunately, but I think he gets to select the players. We used to have it based on rankings, and if you won certain tournaments like the national championship, you'd automatically get a spot. And I, I can't recall if that's still the case. Um but he kind of has a pool of players that he's selected. And obviously it's going to come down to who can afford it and who can make the trip because it's several thousand dollars. You know, it really yeah. is a lot of money. Um, Same as also over right here. But it, it, it's, it's okay if you're a Hollywood uh, director. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, with, yeah. your, with your own yacht. <laughs> if you have two yachts, if you have two yachts, you can fly any fucking ugly. I, I think what Christian should do is take us on the boat. We can take the boat across. Yeah. The That's what we should do. Just avoid the iceberg up in the Atlantic. <laughs> yes, yes. No, no need for a Titanic 2.0. Here, the only thing is, say you weren't selected. Irish passport or an old Irish granny, you could come and play for Ireland. Well, you know, my mother's into genealogy, so if you can find a connection, I'd love to represent Northern Ireland because it's it's tough it's tough to make it in the American squad nowadays. Too much too much competition. You've got Sheridan Walker Walker in the Irish name. Yeah. Plenty of Walkers around here. Loads there used to be a boy who played with his Rasa Donovan Rasa. Who was that? Oh, oh yes, Donovan. Oh, Donovan Rasa. Yeah, he's Irish. He's, fuck, he he's fucking Irish. Irish. Um, He's gonna make an Irish team. I mean, this this might be causing a bit of you know uh, global <laughs> global uh, Packy, global Packy Sheridan tension here. Geo, Packy Sheridan, geo, yeah. Geopolitical fucking entry. There Packy, we go. Yeah. What, Zach? We got Packy you and a, Zach. We're ready. <laughs> get you on a plane. We'll get you a side. We'll get you on oh, our team. We're wait. We're waiting for Akos. Patrick and I have a joke. Waiting for Akos to make their first you know million and. He said he's going to get a private jet and just fly us all over there. So maybe one day. <laughs> stop. You, you stop in Shannon and we'll come down. We'll meet you there and you just get back us in the plane over to Italy. <laughs> you know, I never, I've never been to to uh, Ireland, and that's one regret I had from my time in the UK. Um, that's that's one part of the world I've heard nothing but good stuff about, and would love to visit, and uh, ho hopefully one day. So. I what you guys are doing just... there is amazing. I mean, I let me. So in the ASA, we used to have a monthly newsletter that was always produced. People would mail in their scores, tips and tricks, um, you know, whatever. And they, and then you know, editors would compile it and then physically mail it out in the post. And I remember as a young kid getting that every month, and that was the highlight of my month. Just reading it back to cover. And then eventually VHS and videos came out. And we'd get videos and the DVDs. And I haven't had that same excitement or feeling since your guys' show, to be honest. So, uh, so I'm one of those annoying guys I know that message you. When's the show coming out? I love this show. It's, it's, it's bringing me back to my childhood. And so what you guys are doing is so fantastic. And thank you on behalf of the greater community for doing it because – it's oh, it's making God. me feel like a kid again, frankly. So, and I love it. You, you never you never feel the need to throw an old thumbs down oh. on anything you're upset about. <laughs> no, I, I just I just take your name off the list of suspects just in case. In fact. Just, just when you show those video clips of Daniel or Patrick scoring on me, that's the only time I do the thumbs down. <laughs> let me that's know. Let me know there. more. Let me know more of them. Don't you worry. <laughs> Here. Um, hey. The next time you're in Ireland, make sure you, you have to get to the shed and get yourself in the Wall of Shame. We renamed it the Wall of Shame. The He's Hall of renamed it. Are you doing a signature thing like the shrine or what? So we're he going wants, to put photos. He wants, we're going to put photos. 
photos. Love it. Love it. Yeah, Patrick said nothing but great stuff about the shed. Um, oh, we've obviously got the shed. We've got the shrine. We've got a clubhouse here in Denver. And literally this week, there's messages going around talking about how we need to come up with a name for it because <laughs> we're, you know, we're so motivated by the shed and the shrine, obviously. So uh, we've got a couple names floating around, but I don't know if they'll be as good as, as the shed and the shrine. So The, the, the so shrine's a different level. The shed is very much a shed. <laughs> I just gotta put that out there. We'll find we'll find a name for it. We'll name it for you. Yeah. Well we've got we've got a pub. If you ever come to the States, we've got a pub connected to our clubhouse and the pub's name is the Swindler. It's a fully stocked pub. And so I said we should call the clubhouse the Swindler, but that's the pub's name, so uh, we're, we're trying to come up with maybe we'll call it Packy's Paradise or something. I don't know. We'll call <laughs> Packy's Pub? Packy's Pub. Yeah, there you go. Packy's Pitch. The Swindler's Sack. There you go. We'll, like get, we'll get something. We'll get something. Here, we're going to have uh, a wee look at what's in your box. Um, so here is the Zach Walker's What's in Your Box. All right, boys. Here is my What's in My Box. Uh, Extreme Works box made by Claudio Dogali. Um, I had him put the ASA logo on it, which uh, I love. It's very, very professionally done. Um, got my name on there. Unfortunately spelled wrong, but that's okay. Got a free set of bases out of it. Uh, and got our local Colorado Subudio Club logo on there, designed by uh, one of our newer members, Nathan Berg. Awesome logo. So, um inside the box pretty standard a little messy uh we got two teams um and uh some stickers i was just out in san francisco so i had some asa stickers i was handing out we got a sticker from the western states open that they designed peter volley one of the organizers designed that um we got some random post-it notes with just some notes to myself that i try to read before i play in a tournament uh things to focus on and whatnot um kind of goofy but sometimes get me in the right frame of mind uh, i think patrick showed this but this is a little kind of widget that um some of our newer players in our club made for the national championships pretty cool to show the distance between a throw in and a corner kick so that comes in handy um i got my polishing cloth which is very old with a couple pins on there I used to have more but colorado rapids which is my local professional soccer team in major league soccer um and then uh, Newcastle United, which I've actually been a fan of uh, for a while. And obviously, happy days with lots of money coming in now. So hopefully, they'll get out of the relegation zone. Um, got some Extreme Works polish here, but it's actually supersonic polish in there, which was by one Carlos Granados from Murcia, Spain, the guy who taught Flores and Noguera how to play. So I'm out, though, so I need to order some more. But that's the kind of polish I use. Uh, got a cool custom made American Subudo Association timer with my name on it by Claudio Degali um, from Extreme Works. Uh, I have an Extreme Works goalie here. Um, not sure what kind. I also have a cat goalie somewhere, but um, I need a bigger box because it doesn't fit. And then I've got a bunch of teams, as I think I mentioned, but um, the ones I played with last weekend were this Ajax, um, which is a Profi Base C3M, I believe. And I bought these from, I can't remember if it was Brian Arnold out of Washington, D.C., or Domenico Venezia from New York, but awesome bases. Um, they chip well, they slide well, can play. I like to play fast on the move. And then my newest set of bases, which I just got from Ilias Gikas out of Chicago, a Greek player, former ASA Veterans Champion, is a Liverpool set of astro base uh tri base c3 so i literally just got these and haven't played with them a whole lot but they're pretty nice and sharp looking so uh, and then a couple top spin balls i think so nothing too fancy um but that's what's in my box thanks guys well that's that's a question i've been on a bit i remember chris thomas mentioned he's gone on a bit of a spending spree for bases i've i've fallen into the same conundrum so i think i've got 10 sets of bases over the last year so i've tried extreme works basics extreme works universals profi base c3ms astro base tri base uh i got some talons of course uh, what are they like what are, what's in talons like 
The Talons, they're quality. They're very quality. Um, uh, they're they're needed. We 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 have to pay the crazy shipping costs from Europe, right? And nothing here. So so what Paul is trying to do, I think, is so sorely needed. And their quality bases. Um, he's got different levels to them, I believe, and he's tinkering with them. And the ones he played with in the Nationals, I know. Um, he hasn't mass produced yet, but those really chipped well. Um, the ones that he shipped me, they slide well, they shoot low and hard. I struggled to kind of get that arcing shot with them. Um, yeah. but I know he's, he's constantly soliciting feedback and tinkering with his, uh, his formula. So I think that I just got some bases too. I haven't even tried them, but, um, the guy up in Canada, he sent me some. Oh, fucking, uh, Mike Scrow. Mike Scrow. Yeah. He's a good guy, huh, man? He's a good guy. But it's 3D printing, I think, is changing the game. Um, the I guys are 3D printing goals. They're 3D printing a bunch of stuff. So I think that's the way forward is everyone can try to design their own base. Um, it, it, it takes them nearly a week to 3D print the set of them bases. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the only thing. You need a, an industrial 3D printing setup. Yeah, the guys that we play with, um, Tori Reed and Dexter Schiller, who own the Schiller Reed, the business where our clubhouse is, I think they've got like 20 3D printers at their office. So they're constantly tinkering with stuff. Oh, they built all of our tables. They're, they're a professional um, digital sign production creation company. So they've got these crazy cool CNC cutting machines. Um, where I don't know if you saw the tables we had for the Nationals. Yeah. Ah, fuck my. I put them up there with the best in Europe. The, the quality was professional. He he said he run your whole stream, didn't he, for that national championship? That was Dexter. Dexter did Dexter. that. Dexter, yes. Mm -hmm. right. Airbook yeah. was fucking brilliant. I so, fucking love that man. I so sat watching that, that live. And then I was chatting to all the boys on the. We had like a chat screen going down the side. I was chat. I, I don't know how you read, but it was fucking uh, Daniel Cranston was chatting, and there was your man Varant was chatting. We were all we were like fucking Wayne's man, chat, watching yeah. this, this video live, chatting about it as, as it was going on. That was fucking brilliant. brilliant. I love doing that. That's great. De Dexter oh, loves really? doing that. He's got a bunch of equipment, and the way he describes it was. His setup was amateur. He didn't have a lot of time to do it, so he has goal. He has visions of <laughs> making it even more elaborate and bigger. And he wanted to do graphics with play-by-play -play commentary and color commentary, kind of like I think they did down in Australia. They but did that in Australia, but it was it brilliant. Commentary yeah, is the way they fucking go. Totally. Two right. boys talk, talking about the match. Ah, oh, fuck, this was brilliant. Well, you, I, I had I'm, that in the big screen. I would love to see you two doing a live, you know, analysis with a bit of banter of a game because you two's entertainment factor is through the roof. I love it. It's great. It's all we, we've it's always said. We once we always we used to video everything from we started. I had videoed everything, man. We, we had the wee GoPro camera and we went round, you know, and everybody who wasn't playing. If you weren't playing, you were videoing. So you're yeah. walking around with your paint videoing all the matches. And we cut it all together and, it, you know, man went home and edited it all, put up the wee videos. So it was a video every week. And then we started the Facebook. So we, every night we're playing, we have a live stream going. We have one pitch. So we put the camera on one pitch and everybody takes a turn playing on that live pitch. So everybody's on, but it goes on for fucking hours. You know what I mean? And there's no, you could drop in and drop out. You you wouldn't sit of an evening and watch. Well, okay. So, mate, some people, people some people do. <laughs> some people will do. though, some right? People will. Some people I just know. want a two minute clip. Other people will sit there for five hours. I think you almost have to have both, right? But your yeah, your yeah. thing was great, man. With the two, there was the the top down and then the the side in angle. So you yeah. had the two angles of the pitch and being able to chat at the side. But the one the Australian boys did was fucking great, man. I think he only did the commentary for like the final, didn't he? It was like uh, the last game, the final yeah. match, and they had the commentary. Oh, but it was. Ah. Well, I think they were behind like a glass booth, so they weren't distracting the players as well. They weren't distracting. No, they weren't near. Which them. is they key. Off. They were away off. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Rough. Well, maybe maybe we'll talk with Dexter. I'll show him this video, and maybe we could somehow have a match 
where we Skype you guys in to be live streaming and you two can commentate on a match that's being played live in Denver or something. Wouldn't that be good? <laughs> yes. That would be, that would be <laughs> the fucking business, man. That yeah. Be the I, fucking business. We'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. He's, make, happen. he's, making, he's making a lot of this, like. Nah, nah, and you'll have nothing to do with it. You'll have nothing to do with it. You're not invited. Here's, here's the thing you need to know about the States. If you have any accent from any part of, of UK, Britain, anywhere, they love you. They love you. So <laughs> you, two, you two would probably strike some major deal with BBC America over here to show the game. I'm telling you. Got the, got the accent. That's all you need. <laughs> I thought they would have trouble understanding us. I mean, uh, some, I mean, yeah, man, as a Paul Pitt, as a Paul Pitt, do you call him? Yeah, from yeah. Michigan. I mean, Ham, Ham, we had the video. Oh, is he Michigan as well? We, yeah. we had the video with Peter, Peter Allegi. Allegi, isn't that right? Allegi, Allegi, I, I should. Allegi, Allegi, I don't know. Peter, anyway, Peter, lovely, lovely fella. Yeah. He's the video up, and your man, I made your man come on and go, oof, that's a difficult dialect. Well, I will admit, <laughs> I was a little nervous coming on. You know, I, I lived in London, right? And so I heard a little bit of Cockney, I heard a little bit of uh, Scouse, a little bit of Geordie. You know, I've got mates from all over, but I, 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 I don't have much experience with the Irish dialect, but uh, no, I mean, I. I uh, We'll have, we'll have subtitles. How about that? We'll put some subtitles. I went to, I went to Leeds to visit a friend one time years ago. I was only 19. He was at university, and I flew over to Leeds to visit him. And I got a taxi from the airport back to his, where he was staying, like student house or something. And I, I, I was all excited visiting, out and playing for the first time ever over in England, foreign country. And I was leaning up, chatting away to the taxi man. And he just kept looking at me like, yeah. Okay, just getting nodding and smiling, and I was t- and I was asking him things, and he was saying he was like replying totally different to what I was asking. And I thought this cunt can't fucking understand the word I'm saying, and I couldn't understand him perfectly. And I thought I'm speaking the same language as bastard Kenny. He can't even understand the fucking word, but the English struggle with us. So I, I, I struggle with, with you. Struggle we with struggle with you. You're yeah, fucking old, dirty Belfast pig Latin. <laughs> Nobody knows what you're saying. <laughs> The Americans can That's understand it. perfectly what? fine. I don't know. See? Zach, can you what? translate what he just said to me there? I think no. he said he loves you and he'd like you to come out of the shed <laughs> for a friendly or two tonight. That's, that's what I... <laughs> Zach, Some, I, don't sometimes... want, I don't want to go in dates, but I've beat him the last two games of played. Uh, I saw that. I saw that. And I've noticed Martin has quickly changed the subject every time that's been brought up. So. Oh, we'll he's straight, on the, next, we'll straight on the next result. And there's no recordings of it either. Anyway, Zach Spaces. Zach Spaces. <laughs> like we're oh, we're back. We're, we're past Zach Spaces. He doesn't know what to do. He's like you. So, so, so I played with um, I played with Profi Base C three M's. I think uh, um, out in San Francisco. But honestly, I'm I'm not like Dan Cranston is the expert. He has twenty different types and he weighs them and buys micro scales. And he is so technical at the way he looks at it. And I'm trying to learn that skill and ability, but it's it's like speaking a foreign language to me. So, you know, I normally tell people, like, just give me a base. What should I play with? Um, but but that's what I played with, and I like them. But, you know, to me, there's no perfect base. Um, you, you just got to kind of find what works. You're always going to – you're going to give up um, – something here or there depending upon the millimeter difference or the microgram difference or whatever um i I try to just focus on the game and and not worry too much about those details but i know they do matter uh especially as the bases improve year by year i I I tried to buy bases once from the astro base website have you ever tried that man jesus well, I, not without having a drink in hand, mate, because it's uh, fuck me. You, you need a you need a course. You need to do a course on Astro Bass, and yeah. then you can maybe go and look at what sort of bases you want. Well, and I think that going going back to beginners, I think that turns people off a bit um, because it's too many choices. If you just gave them an A, B, or C option, it it simplifies it. It's it's a hard enough game to learn, anyways. You know. Yeah. And you throw all that in there. So that's what I like about the Talon bases is it's a very standard, great, you know, beginner base, but you also can can take it and play with it. 
for longer periods of time if you want to get more competitive. Um, and that's what's needed. You know, there's no, at least in the States, there's no retail distribution. There's nothing being sold in soccer shops or stores or toy stores. And that's what we need. That's, that's when a game, in my opinion, thrives is when you've got like the business and the marketing behind it. And if you don't have access to even base level equipment, you know, how are people going to play the game and, and get hooked? And that's a huge problem for us in the States. So it's like, it's like that everywhere. Man, it's like it's only recent that Alan Lee has his wobbly hobby shop. You know, you could have bought an Extreme Works pitch from Gareth Christie. You know, flicks for kicks. You could have yeah. bought. A, a, you could have bought a pitch from him, but as regards the bases, nah, you were relying on second hand bases or Daniel Sheen the Chad bases. Yeah, Daniel's great. If you message him, he'll send you a, a brochure. You know, we all has different bases and things on it, but. It's the same thing. You're under like, do you know what I mean? And then you're taking a risk because if you you're not going to get a set of new bases for less than sixty pound. I don't know what that is in dollars, man, but that must be like probably about probably dollars. About five eighty dollars. It's it's a lot of money, yeah. They, 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 you know, it's a lot of fucking money, man. They they take a risk and then you get them and you don't like them or you yeah. can't play with them, you know. And then you're stuck with them, and that's where you end up buying second hand bases off people. Yeah, but Bradley. I've gone back Bradley's to, I've gone back to the. Bradley's taken, someone's got in, say, Bradley's head, because he's went from £15, which would be $25 basis, to open it back into the £40 department, because he thinks... I'm, I'm going back I'm going back to the... Did you ever play with the Cha basis? I've never... I think maybe I tried one Cha base. I can't remember. That's a base I don't know if I've ever really played with, so... Uh, it's, these are the snipers. They're quite light. They're, they, they are... Well, I like them. I always like them, but for whatever reason, only had one set of them. And then I moved on. That's why I started them CLR bases. They were, yes, they're really cheap, but I could have as many sets as I wanted. And you can, you know, you can change the color from the base to the center to the ring. So you can have like a, a non sitting here, but you know, you can have like a red and white stripe bases or blue and white striped or whatever. You know, you can change them up and they're really cheap, but they're not great. Barry Spain. Yeah, not, not cheap. Inexpensive, right? Not cheap. Inexpensive. inexpensive. Yes, you're right. Inex they're inexpensive. <laughs> and I don't. Because if you I, say I it's cheap, no one's going to want to buy it, right? Or at least in the no, states. No. Uh, that he's, word's he's, he's, not, he's, not he's not selling. Inexpensive. It's well, plastic man's right, losing so, a fortune. <laughs> but our Barry, Barry says, has tried them out. He says, oh, "I tried out them bases, but uh, nah." Shit. Well, we've had you know we've had these new these new players in Colorado, which have been quite frankly, a breath of fresh air. And they they come from a board gaming background. I don't know if that's a huge kind of subculture in the UK, but, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, all, yeah, all of yeah. these, you know, really complex, you know, um, role player, I forget what it's called, RPG, role player games. You know, they'll spend tons and tons of money on that. And so they weren't afraid to all buy Extreme Works pitches and top of the line bases. Yeah. But I think that's still like a niche. I'm talking... The random, like I was, soccer mom, as we call it, soccer kid, you know, I think it's got to be 15, 20 bucks for, for a set or so not for a set for a, for like a team and 40, 50 bucks for, for, a, for a, for a set. I think that's, that's what the, the first set was that my mother purchased. Um, and, and, you know, I think 3d printing is helping lower that cost now, but, um, you know, it's 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 so tough. Yeah, I, I don't know what the answer is, but um, a, there's a main field out there. It's just an, it's impossible. Um, one thing yeah. one thing I do want I, I want to get Dan Cranston on the show, obviously to complete the holy trinity of you <laughs> three guys. But I want to get him on, and I also want to love him to be part of the show because I think his analysis of Subutio is fantastic. I've watched the Subutio channel where he breaks down. And shows you where players are making mistakes and what yeah. they should have done. I would love to have a segment of him on the show every week, maybe a minute of him saying, "This is what you could have done here." You know, making people who make mistakes or people who didn't take advantage. You know, his analysis is, is amazing. He he is the best at that. He loves to do that. I can't imagine he'd say no. Um, he he came out to the nationals in Denver, and like I said, we have about ten brand new players and Patrick and I 
are not like that. We're, we're, we're different. We're just kind of, let's have a pint. We'll, we'll tell stories. We'll play and kind of teach by just playing and showing. And, and the way that Dan can, can put his thoughts into words and, and teach that is unlike anybody I've ever seen. And one of our new players, Jason Wooldridge, unfortunately got drawn into the group of death with Patrick and some other top players, Peter Leggy, and he finished bottom of the group and he was just crushed. <laughs> and nobody nobody really took the time to kind of stop and teach him the game because they were in the group of death. They needed to win. They needed to get the points and make sure get that the they goal, got the group. Goal difference up. And Daniel did like a 20 to 30 minute kind of tutorial doing what he does just in person. And Jason said he got more out of that 20, 30 minutes than he did in the four or five games he played in the group of death. And yeah, I, it's it's definitely needed, and um, the, his his ability to do that is second to none. So I, yeah. I think that's a great idea to bring on. Definitely get him. We'll get him on, and he's he's starting to comment in the YouTube channel, so I think he's starting to get sucked in. <laughs> See, he, he's he's bre- he's breaking it down, telling you what this guy did wrong, what he could have done. What we would say if we were watching that is, oh, he's fucked it. He's fucked it. <laughs> He yeah. shit the bed. He what shit the bed. Shit, he shit the bed. He went yeah. up there. He was about to shit. Shit the bed. <laughs> well, people yeah. ask me that. They're like, how do you do this? And I was like, I just do it. I don't know. I just, it, it, it makes sense up here, but I don't know how to articulate Look, it. You know? when, I'm, when I'm playing Bradley, he always takes – he'll get himself into the box, and I'll set. I'll get set the, whole, the, the keeper to, to take, save the shot, and then he'll take an extra touch. And it'll just it'll always put him off. It'll always yeah. either send him out the position or it'll send him too far forward or bring the ball too close to the keeper. And the, as soon as you set, and you don't even you, you can't even take a defensive flick because you just go, you fucked it. You shit the bed. You, you didn't need that extra touch. Yeah. That rarely happens. That rarely happens, Zach. Eh? But that, that's rarely the thing happens. I notice you, you always do. You always go for that extra one. And then when I get in the position that he gets in, I just go, I'm shooting. I'm just Ooh. over the bar. Over so the there's, bar. A, there's a video out there. One of the players that I kind of studied a lot, surprise, not surprisingly, is Carlos Flores. I was fortunate enough when I was in London to get to travel with him and play. It was always the English Premier League wow. team in the Murcia. And we'd always, and I speak a little bit of Spanish. So, you know, we'd have, be having some pints and be talking at the bar in broken Spanish or whatever. And I just, even even then when he was 19, you just saw it. You know, I think my first ever tournament was the London I.O. And he beat (laughs) Stasi in the semifinals in a crazy four to three back and forth game when he was 19. And Stasi from Italy was the then world champion. And ever since then, you know, I've just kind of studied and tried to model my game after him. But if you watch the video by the French guy on YouTube, his top 10 goals All of them are from the middle of the field. And somebody at some blog did like a technical analysis of the percentage probability of scoring goals in certain parts of the shooting area. And not surprisingly, you know, the closer you get to the midfield to a certain extent or to the center, to the penalty spot, the higher your percentages go up. And that's kind of how Dan thinks. He's very like analytical. We've got quite a few American players like that. That's not me, but it kind of resonates with me. I'm married to an engineer, so I kind of understand that world a little bit of breaking down the science of it. And I always take, try to take that extra touch or two to kind of bring in a little center and just be a little more extra patient. And I've learned that from not just Flores, tons of European players, but um, that's been a lesson to your point of that. We Americans have had to learn the hard way. We used to just get over the corner or get over the shooting line and shoot from the corner. And all these Europeans are like, yeah, you're shooting at this much goal. But the further yeah. you get to the center, the goal expands a bit, right? Yeah. And that was kind he of... Has, he, has, you know, he has to move his keeper over to the center of Lynette. And the yeah. more to the center of Lynette, you've either side then. Yep. Whereas you're, you're, you're right, you're, because it's the lines, it's the line at the back, and you're, it's hard to get in the middle, so you go, you, go down the, you go down the wing, you come on the left side, and you, you're, you're trying to get into the bottom corner from either side. And you're right. Yeah. I mean, you can... You can ticky tack yourself to death to your point, Lawrence, where you take a couple too much and then you're that far away from the goalie and there's no yeah, base to chip over that. But it's finding that that fine balance and that just unfortunately takes time. So well talking of uh 
goals and shooting. We're going to have a wee look at the uh, and you're going to judge the winner, Zach. So Ready? here is here is goals of the week. What's the score, Ian? Go on, Ruby. Go on, Ruby. Oh, two now. In my, I'm going to call it semi-professional opinion because I'm not professional anywhere near that. As much as I'd love to support my fellow American, Dan Cranston, that was a great goal. You got to go with Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. I mean, yeah. what a... Well done, Rubes. And uh, uh, we're going to send you an American phrase. <laughs> we're not really. <laughs> I'll mail something. What do you want? I'll mail something. <laughs> send her a sticker. Or a box. I, I um, can do that. Before we go, we're going. We're just to let you know, we're going to run an I.O. It's on the festive calendar now. Martin Oak Bradley, 18th of June next year. Maybe, maybe you guys can make it over. That's tempting. It, Very tempting. Is it? Have they double check with the dates? Actually, 18th of June. I think it might be. And this then, is the, the, fir the first in a long time in this part of the world. Sir. If not, if not, we could see you in the World <laughs> Cup. As an Irish player, <laughs> you guys, are, are you we, we were jump? supposed to announce that. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. On the eight, the eighteenth and the nineteenth of June next yeah. year. There you go. International <laughs> Open, the Irish but, Open, the Irish Open. Well, but so good. so Lawrence, is there any good cycling near there? Because my wife is an avid cyclist, so oh, if, I can, yes. if we can line up some cycling with some Sabudio, we're set. Taylor, I'll take her over Memorial Gap, the hardest, the hardest uh, hill in Derry, or the hardest hill she in like, Ireland. Does she, she like, like hills? hills? Like we live, we live in Colorado. She loves hills. That's all she uh, does. Taylor, uh, Is there where, a lot of hills in Colorado? Well, they're not hills. They're mountains. But, Mountain but yeah. Ranges? Well, so, gonna you're, you're, she's going to fucking love Derry, man. Yeah. Derry is hell. like fucking that. <laughs> There is all hills. I mean, I grew up. I grew up in very flat. So when I ride my bike, I like to be flat. But I, you know, it's a different so world. I, yeah. Ah uh, man, you gotta come to Ireland, and we'll get her a bike, and we'll take her out cycling, and you can go play some video, and it will be amazing. Excellent. Come, excellent. Come to Ireland. Come to Ireland. That's an open invitation. Appreciate we'll, it. We'll, we'll hook you up if you need somewhere to stay. We'll hook you up. I appreciate it. Likewise to Denver. We we don't have any festive tournaments on the docket yet. Um, we are going to be hosting the national championships next summer, maybe fall. And um, I'd, I'd like to open that up to foreign players personally somehow that weekend um, because there's just not enough tournaments, in my opinion, uh, to warrant everyone kind of being in their own bubble. The, the more the merrier. If an Irish player wants to come win the American Championship, I think that's awesome. Why not? I know we had we had that we had that discussion over here when we had our own Irish Championship, the, the the national championship. You know, it's an All Ireland thing, the national championship. So we we had thought about that as well, or something that well, I had. not Some people had thought about inviting, you know, others over. But if you, I would be the same with yourselves. If it's your own national championship, you know, it's about it's a it's like somebody said it's about finding the national champion. Yeah. So that if you were having a World Cup, you know, if you were going to the World Cup, then that national champion would be the Yeah. The rep sort of thing, you know. I don't know. 
We had a we had a Belgian player, Dave Voters, um, one time for our national championships in Washington D.C. And the nationals were on Saturday, and then the I.O. or G.P. was on Sunday. And I remember he played because he destroyed me like six zero. He played in the oops. Oh, sorry, somebody's calling me. That's very right. on, very unprofessional. Very, very unprofessional, <laughs> Zachary. Very unprofessional. <laughs> My son's youth football coach. I don't know. Hope he's not getting cut. But, uh, but the Belgian played in the tournament, but his results somehow didn't count, I guess, for the national. So he still got games in. He just couldn't be national champion. So it was a creative way of if you're going to come all the way from uh, Europe to play, a week, right. an event, let's work around that and accommodate that. And I, I think that's brilliant, personally. So that means yeah, that's just, just whoever, whichever yank it into the final, won. Well, I think yeah, I think I can't remember. I, and I think maybe the group stage also counted as the group stage for the IO. It, it was back when Greg Deinhardt and Rick Wilcox used to organize these massive tournaments where all the Europeans came, and it was it was very very forward thinking and ahead of its time, in in my opinion, to kind of bridge those, you know, um, the, bridge the Atlantic, so to speak. So. Definitely. Yeah, Kenny Beggs. Kenny Beggs is very fond of you. Well, so Kenny Beggs, I think I sent you a picture of him and I when I was, you know, yeah. 20, a wee Wayne or whatever you call it. Um, <laughs> I, him and I had a, had, a, had a great time. I think we went out we went out to dinner that night. I think there's a picture of us and a bunch of people at some random Chinese restaurant in London. And he's, he's, a, he's a great guy. Very good player. Um, him and I, I think, got drawn into a group with Nastasi, uh, which... Quite certain neither of us had a result against him, but uh, yeah, Kenny's a good guy. I'm glad to see him playing with y'all, and um, yeah, please send him my regards. So, oh, Kenny's well, he watches, a legend. He watches he's every the week. fucking legend. Kenny's a legend over here. There'd be no. nothing where Kenny Bays over here, man. Nothing Sir where Kenny. I know. <laughs> Sir Kenny. Hey, Zach. Um, <coughs> you have to, you have to get on with your uh, your Sunday afternoon. Spend some more time with your kids. Yes, sir. Um, appreciate. You taking the time and coming on the show, you're an absolute legend over there. So keep doing what you're doing, and thank you very much, man. No, thanks yeah, for what you guys are doing. You, you, I mean, in my opinion, what you're doing is is more needed than what any of us guests have done. Um, I'm sending your videos out every week to new prospective players. Uh, what you guys are doing is wonderful. I know it's thankless, but thank yeah. you. Appreciate it's, it. Appreciate it. They probably don't understand. Too, too many of us. Too many of these. <laughs> wherever it is hey, coming from. That just that just means you're doing something right if you're starting to get some haters. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, thanks a million. Yep. Appreciate it. Crazy. Cheers. Absolutely fantastic, Jack. Thank you very much, man. I really appreciate it. taking your oh, time no, on a, a Sunday afternoon to speak to us. Um. So we're going to do some match highlights now from Zach and Dan Cranston. So here is Zach, some match highlights. Zach attack. Zach attack. Here it is. Check it out. The final. Brian, you take this. Thank you. <laughs>
Brilliant, brilliant highlights, Martin Oak. Thank you very much. So here is a wee video diary from our guest who was on the show tonight, the magnificent Zach Walker. Um, him and Packy Sheridan went to California, as you know. So here is a wee video diary from the two boys. Check it out. Hey, Martin. Hey, Watsy. Zach Walker here uh, at the airport early Saturday morning. Uh, just got picked up by ASA national champion Patrick Sheridan. Uh, we're headed out to San Francisco today. I forgot to get a video with him in the car. Unfortunately, we're on separate flights headed out to San Francisco for the 2021 American Subudio Association Western States Open, the WSO. But really excited. You can see my gate right there. And uh, I think we're gonna have 16 players from uh, three different states. Uh, with a large contingent of new players playing today coming up from California. So really looking forward to the weekend. It's been a while since I've traveled for a Super Duo tournament, but going to have a lot of fun, and hopefully the uh, the Cup will come back to Colorado with either Pat or I. But uh, appreciate Verant and Peter out in California and all the guys' hospitality, and try to snap some more videos uh, along the way. Take care, boys. Bye. All right, Martin, Watsi, we made it. Long travel here through California, but we made it to the beautiful city of San Francisco. There's the view of the street. Well, uh, for those of you Europeans that have never played an American tournament, long distances. I think I spent nine hours by plane traveling to get here for the tournament. But here's the venue at a dance studio. We just started the beginner's tournament, so we'll walk in and give you a view. So we got about 15, 16 players from three, four different states. It's a beginner's tournament. There's an open tournament, and then tomorrow there's a team tournament. So, uh, yeah, beautiful San Francisco, California, just up the road from LA. We'll keep you posted throughout the day. Cheers, boys. All right, boys, we're in the semifinals. We got a little Colorado Derby here, Pat versus I. The other semi, we got Southern California, Varon Kerry versus Conan Mullen, Northern California. And we got the beginners final over there, a couple condors. I believe so. So we're starting soon. It's late. We're rallying. We got Brian on the camera. We're having fun. All right, Watsy. Uh, we're here at a little mid tournament break to get a quick little drink. I don't know if you do this in Ireland, but. This is how we roll in the U.S., so come visit, boys. All right, boys. Sunday morning, day after the tournament. Uh, what a fun, fun day in San Francisco. Uh, absolutely knackered, but um, had, a, had a great time. Many, many thanks to uh, Peter Volley and Veronica Kikarian. They are amazing hosts out here in San Francisco. Um, I was fortunate enough to pick up the win yesterday in a, a really tightly contested Western States Open. So, um, yeah, happy, exhausted. Got my coffee at the airport. Ready to head back to uh, Denver, Colorado. But um, really fun to uh, finally get back out and travel for Subudio again after uh, a long COVID which obviously is still ongoing, but um, yeah, tons of fun. Highly recommend coming out to San Francisco if anybody ever gets the chance. A lot of fun, good new players here, and what a great, great city. Wish I could spend more time here, so thanks for following along, uh, Martin and Lawrence, and until next time, cheers. Where are we going first? Your, your part of Shuma. I have no... Uh... Creative content. I have no. <laughs> you don't even fucking say it. And I do. Because week on week out, you fucking tell me what they do, when they do it, and how they fucking do it. And if I make one wee mistake, go up for a minute, take a smoke on my smoke, you're jumping down my fucking back. So, yes, you do full fucking creative control over this part of the fucking show. Oh, fuck. It was our friend Alan Lee's Wobbly Hobby Super League, Super Club League. Super League for clubs. 
<laughs> don't know what. Super League, Club League, Club League, Wobbly Hobby, Club League. Club League, are you stars. Yeah. Hard that go. Who, who, who was the winner? Who was... Straight to that. Straight to that. No, well, hard to go. Hard but they, to go. they had a whole rack of clubs. Well, we see how many clubs they have. I think they had like 12 clubs, man. Fortunately, Derry City couldn't be there, but... Un- unfortunately, this year we couldn't be there. There's like 12 clubs here. Fantastic, man. So they had a big round. First day, they played a big... They had a big draw anyway. And then the top clubs went down to Division 1. And the bottom clubs went down to bottom. It's a bit rough. The second... <laughs> second order clubs went down to Division 2. But anyway, if we go... We'll go straight to the scores. We'll go straight to the results anyway. Because good yes. friends of our club, part of our four, four club, and the club cup that we run every year, good friends mm-hmm. of ours and the show, Wolverhampton Table Football Club came out on top of Division 1. Well done, Wolves. Well done. And they have, a guest, Justin, they have a guest player, Mac, don't they? Justin, Mick, Richard, and a ringer. Eh? Justin Finch. Two Justins. They had our Justin, and then they had Justin Finch on as well. Who Justin, played the full done for their fourth man. Justin Finch wearing a Wolves shirt. And he's a West Ham supporter. Oh, I was won't. playing for Wolves. This is Sabudu. It's not field that soccer. Won't, that won't go down well. That won't go down well in West London. Bye. <laughs> You're always trying to court controversy. No wonder you're getting all that fucking hit. Uh, anyway, <laughs> big, big shout, big shout to Wolves. Very, very proud of them. They're fantastic. The competition they played against. So they topped their table with three ones, three ones out of five, ten points. But the competition they were up against, Dundee United. Yeah. You know what I mean? On yeah. the scene for fucking decades, man. Cardiff Bluebirds, White Star. That's a super group. Super group. We were very own Mark Farrell, plays for them. Yeah. Harrow, Harrow Hawks. Very good. They've been about for fucking donkeys. Rudy plays for them. And then Stanway Rovers, who were a super group as well. So, uh, do you know what I mean? Well done, the Wolves. Well done, the Wolves. They're fucking, they're fairly coming on, aren't they? They're flying. D- d- flying. Division sh- shows you the level of competition that because in the Division 2, you had, well, Kent and Victor, who came top of the table, beating Glasgow, who played what? in Division 2, beating Glasgow on points there, or goal difference. That's very good. London Road, Sister Club, they come in third place in the Division 2. Solent, Way. you know what I mean, man. Solent first yeah. big competition, man. Fourth place in Division Two, fantastic. Surrey Saracens, then coming in, for, and then Harbour Hill Rovers, all all new clubs, man. You know what I mean, but you know, fucking fantastic. Just want to look at Wolves scores here. So they went down one two to Harrowhawks, three one over Cardiff Bluebirds. Who else? Two one over White Star, Super Group. Yeah, anyway, fantastic. So that was a that looked like an absolutely fantastic weekend competition. Well done, and congratulations to Alan putting that on, and whoever obviously whoever helped him, and I'm sure there was just more than Alan. Oh no, there's more than Alan. There's Mar- Martin Hodge was there. Martin Hodge did a lot of work on it as well, I believe. Fair play to everybody but, uh, putting the work on. Fucking brilliant! Really good, really good. And there was plenty of footage on Facebook. If you want to look it up, and Alan and is. And we Ruby's goal from uh, the goal of the week. Yeah. Video there as well. Perfect. So there you go. Some, right, she's some size. I've seen the, the size of her in the video. She's huge, isn't she? She's getting up there. She's the size of her, dad. Fuck's sake. It's going to be big like Kane, I know. It's going to be big Where's, like Kane. Is that everything in that, or is there more to come from that event? There was no, a team a... day, was it? Was there no team day the next day? No, it was, was all, it, all? it was all fucking teams that like kid. What was ah. it called? The Wobbly Hobby Club League. <laughs> Club oh, I League. thought I thought they played si- uh, single. Oh, no, no. On the Saturday, and then they all, the, no. They all went down. There was a big, there was a big draw. There was a cup on the first day. Right. Cup on the first night. Right. So they were split into like three groups. Right. Four in each group. They're split into three groups, and then the top two in each group, I believe. Let me just check that out here. See, yes, the top, the, the start. You just went straight in at the start and uh, 
this is what happened. Two leagues and that was it. Didn't explain this the bit at the start. I think with my fucking competition, I'm only getting the scores. <laughs> the top two in each group went through to Division 1. Right. And then the bottom two in each group went down to Division 2. Fantastic. And then there we go. They were, then the second day, there was like a league, wee yeah, mini league it. run between each of the divisions. Yeah, so we got there in the end. We got went, there the long, end. went the long way round. But at the... We did. Anyway. We'll fly over to uh, Australia now, as far away as you can get from the Wobbly Hobby Super League. Go How's ahead that? then. That's not, you're, not very, you're not being very green. Flying all the way from Wobbly Hobby to fucking Australia, but go on. It's a virtual flight. Your carbon footprint's terrible. It's a virtual carbon flight. Footprint. Carbon footprint's fucking shocking, but sucker, go and stop sucking that. It's up, it's up a left with that super share. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, Jesus. Northern, 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 well, we're all fucking. <laughs> like people super gluing themselves to your shed. Do you want to get on with it? Do you want to get on with this or what? Do you want to get on? <clears throat> for, for a boy, for a boy's no one, but you're doing a fair lot of yapping. <laughs> go on. Do you want to be all right to go on now? Go ahead, it's your part, Sire. Northern Falcons, November Waspa, Swiss system again. This crowd, man. Ooh. So they played what? They played four rounds and they had seven competitors, mm. which was good. So, big names Steve Detra, Fisted President, and he's still a Fisted President. Elliot Kennedy, hear him all the time. Urban Feister, is that his name? Anyway, well, so competition was won by Elliot Kennedy. Well done, Elliot. So, well done, Elliot. So, three wins, three wins, one draw, no losses. Very good. Perfect. Steve Detter finished up fourth place in that. John D. Brenner coming in second. Corbin Fister, number three. And then they had a Jeff Zerme and a Simon Cole and a Neil Brenner. Very good. Well done. Well done. What Where about that? To? Where are you jumping to next? Where are well, you in your I, I, I was I, I was just going to throw a wee shout out. Yeah. To, uh, well, actually, maybe I shouldn't because potentially he's one of the thumbs downers. Eh? Well, Stuart Grant. The studio collector slash yes. player. Yes. And he's uh he's his Ras Casual League. Quite a lot of quite a lot of statistics and scores kept for such a casual wee league. But anyway, oh, no. <laughs> lots of games played, man. Lots of games played. Lots of names. Look at this man. He's only running that how long? A couple of months. <coughs> I'd say about one, two, two, three. two or three months. Sixteen names in this here sheet. That's pretty all good, man. Part. Of all taking part. Now, there's one outstanding runaway success in the whole thing. He's played nine games, won nine games, and scored 27 goals. Alan Lee. Won the only Alan Lee. <laughs> won the only Alan Lee. That's why he's number one, the last bit. That's it. And there's a, a William T, whoever he is, who's, now, who's next up on the board, 14 points. Stuart Grant himself. Can I work this out? Hold on a moment. Where's the points? Oh, uh, here we go. Oh, maybe they're not counting points. Maybe they're not counting points. They're not counting points. Good on them. They're not counting points. Our it's... Stuart, he's played 12 matches. He has won. Give it a guess. Dead or uh, seven. No. What? He's won one match out of his 12. <laughs> you built that up like you took one of those. You built he's that not. up like he was third in the no. league. No, but he's the <laughs> superstar. He's a celebrity. Like, the way you brought he does that to us. He was third in the league. I think he handed out the trophies at the Wobbly Hobby Super League. Anyway, three draws, nine losses, scored well three goals. Ooh. Boys are 
at 21 past them. But that's all right. I, but he's got that one important thing. A win. He's got that one. Alan Lee, who else in here? Gary G, he's doing well. Gary G's played 11. He's won six. It's good. Good going. Good going. They're, doing, they're, not, they're not keeping points. That's good. They're not keeping points. They're just keeping three weeks. That's week three. That's only three three times they've been going. Well, you could... Uh, keeping the scores in the three times. Very good, man. Technically, if you really wanted, you could work out the points there, but don't be bothering yourself. No. <laughs> but it's very good. Alan Lee, look at this, 100% win. Stuart Grant has a 8.3% win. Oof. And then they get the, well, he's doing the scores, 75% loss. But anyway, that's, very, very statistical. that's not important. Very statistical. statistical. It's very good. It's very good. Great to see you go. That's it. Uh, I think that's us. That's us. Well done. Thank you very much. What about a wee shout out for Vincent for his birthday? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Vincent uh, Copano, eh? St. Vincent, the hardest working it? man in the video. Happy birthday, Vince. Ching, ching, Vincent. Vince. Hear me, Vince. Fuck. I apologize. Happy birthday, Vincent. Thank you. Happy birthday, Vincent. <laughs> you know, I'm my middle name is Vincent. Sorry, I didn't want to bother you. <clears throat> You're Lawrence. Oh, you are Lawrence Vincent Watson. That's right. Lawrence Vincent Watson. I forgot about that. I'm going to have to put on the odd two bars. Ooh, there'll be more people Ooh. gluing themselves to your shed. Get about a minute out of these bars. <sighs> right, well, hey, that's it. Like everything. Hopefully, uh, letters next week. Written letters. Um, the three I, think anyway. it's, I think it's the, the casual attitude you take to the show. Look at you. Your partner's just right, sit back and relax. And your, 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 denim, j- your denim jacket. Are you double denim? Have you double jeans denim. and a denim jacket on? Double denim, brother. Double denim. Double denim, not, double denim was never cool. Certainly not oh, cool now. I'm bringing it back. This is the 21st century. I'm bringing it back. Right. You're not allowed to wear jeans, is it? Can't even go. Are you still wearing your bars? pajama bottoms? <laughs> nope. No. Nope. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. Wearing my pajama bottoms. <laughs> fucking TV. You, you, you fucking your it. fucking co host, the main host, showing you up in front. I shouldn't have fucking come back. Have you showed me up in the whole fucking the whole world watching? Put 398 <laughs> lame fellas looking at us. <laughs> potentially, potentially, their wives and partners, mothers or anything, could have been watching. Watching. You're big burly. <laughs> I'm actually sporting my. <laughs> you can't see them. Woo! Fancy. There he is. City Table up. Football Club. Tracksuit bottoms. So you are. What's that? Here. Stylish, did you say? Was that what was that? <laughs> <laughs> the last time I've seen a pair of black track bottoms was. Uh, Red down the side of him, it was old <laughs> himself. Great. Stop sending me letters. You're way all quiet again. Couldn't hear you. Thumbs up on Monday. Bye.